What if Jet Set Radio had been an RPG? The idea itself is not as out there as you might think. Series producer Masayoshi Kikuchi once said that the original Dreamcast game could have been made into an adventure game or an RPG. Now, in reality, it was an arcade-style action game, but its sequel, Jet Set Radio Future, opened things up and made exploring Tokyo Toe more of an adventure. So what would Jet Set Radio be like if it was made in an RPG style? Let's find out together. I'm a huge Jet Set Radio fan and I love RPGs, but I promise this is all not just me theory crafting in my brain. This is totally a quote that was made by the series producer Masashi Kikuchi. I'll give you the full quote from the Rude Awakening documentary that was included with Jet Set Radio HD. We started to shape the game from visual impact and imaging. So in the beginning for the inline skate game, we only had a vague idea. I don't know if the graffiti element was there. I'm not sure if it was there or not. The point is, we could have made it into an adventure game or an RPG. But rather than make it a complicated game, we wanted to make it a simple game. So there's definitely a lot to unpack in that quote about Jet Set Radio, but I want to give a little more context first about the initial game design. When Masayoshi Kikuchi joined Sega, his first large-scale project was boss battle design on Panzer Dragoon 2. And it was this project where he met Jet Set Radio artist Ryuta Ueda. As it's been told in a few different interviews, Ueda would draw these character designs based on what was popular at the time in Japanese youth culture. Eventually, as he worked more with Kikuchi, Ueda wanted to work together on a new, innovative project and showed his designs to his colleague. The artwork inspired Kikuchi into realizing something more concrete as a story, and so the two Sega employees began to work together on what we now know as Jet Set Radio. We wanted to work on something that was completely unlike Panzer Dragoon Saga, something dealing with pop culture and something that was cool. Based on all of this information, we know that if Jet Set Radio had turned into an RPG, or as I'm gonna call it, the JSRPG, it would probably have the following traits. The initial designs by artist Ryuta Ueda based on contemporary Japanese youth culture of the late 1990s, the desire to make something cool, but also a simple game to understand, and of course, the inclusion of inline skating as a main element. Now, if you look at RPGs of the era, it would be likely that Jet Set Radio would have been another turn-based affair. Think Final Fantasy with some real-world cultural influence. But honestly, that seems a bit watered down, and it would clash with the ethos of the project, creating something new. When I joined, I was both surprised and disappointed. There were only anime and manga-like designs. It certainly wasn't the Sega I thought it would be. The development of Jet Set Radio began after Panzer Dragoon 2, so probably within the range of late 1996 to early 1997. At this point in time, RPGs are really starting to grow in scale. And one of the most iconic RPGs of all time, Final Fantasy VII, would be hitting its promotional stride and will become a huge title in gaming, which is exactly what the Jet Set Radio team didn't want to do, make something similar to what's already been done. Most likely, Jet Set Radio RPG would probably stay away from anything remotely related to FF7, including gameplay. In my mind, it would be an action-based RPG. It allows it to be different from other RPGs, and you can still use the inline skating as a movement option for gameplay. Action RPGs also have some influence from fighting games, which is why you have really simple button combinations that will make for some fun hack and slash gameplay. They're generally also less management heavy when compared to turn-based RPGs, so it does accomplish the goal of wanting something simple. But with all that said, would this be possible? And how different would it really be to our Jet Set Radio? Let's start with some possibilities. And to illustrate my points, I've gotten some designs from my pal Baomi Tama based on what we're going to be talking about. And it'll help kind of explain what I'm thinking a Jet Set Radio RPG could look like. If you look at Ryuta Ueda's original concepts for Jet Set Radio, you'll find the game would have looked more industrial in its world design. Although this look was scrapped for something more colorful to match the team's vision of a manga dimension, an action RPG version of Jet Set Radio might have adopted more of this look, perhaps with it becoming more colorful as the game progressed. It could also have looked like a modified version of the Tokyo Toe we know now. There was an emphasis during development to really make a world to explore. This also brings up an interesting question. Would the Jet Set Radio RPG have been in 2D rather than 3D? I'm not so sure. Although other prominent action RPGs of the era, like the Tales games, hadn't made that leap away from 2D yet, other Sega action titles like Shenmue and rent a hero took full advantage of the Dreamcast's power to be full 3D adventures, and I think JSRPG would do the same. There were two goals Ueda and I shared from the beginning. The first was to incorporate motifs not found in traditional games, 
things that the younger generation would find cool. The second was, as I said earlier, making the most of a 3D environment and having a new way of playing games. So ideally, the Jet Set Radio RPG would probably be a mishmash of the game we know now, with a little more fighting involved. We may or may not have the fun of spraying graffiti, but I think the foundation of JSR's gameplay would still be present. As much as some may argue that Jet Set Radio is about the concept of love and non-violent expression through graffiti, shout out to Rock Paper Shotgun on that one, I'd argue being chased by the police, a clown like detective Rottweiler's missiles and helicopters justifies at least having some kind of self-defense. I think a nice combination of hand-to-hand -hand moves, skating tricks, and DIY weapons would do the trick to fight off Rokaku, or whatever form the enemy takes in JSRPG. If your main characters are youth skaters, they're not going to have a ton of resources to work with, and they're going to use what they can to fight the power. Stuff like water pipes or baseball bats would probably be in the Rudy's arsenal. As long as you keep the combat fun and simple, I think having that Jet Set Radio feel to doing tricks and combos with the skating would definitely still be present in JSRPG, maybe even helping with boosting your combat power. Also, I kind of just want to see Combo beat people up with the boombox. Don't you? <laughs> So maybe the Jet Set Radio RPG wouldn't be so different from the game we have now. But the reason it still has that cult classic status with so many players is its character, music, and visual design. What would change with JSRPG? Well, probably not much. The sketches Ueda gave me had things like t-shirts, denim, headphones, inline skates, and other things that invoked the street culture at the time. From street fashion, the idea of setting the scene in a city like Shibuya or Shinjuku and having a pirate radio DJ were born. The idea of a game where you could freely run around the city and trick using guardrails was born from the inline skates. And like that, we kept having more and more ideas roll out. As for the sound direction, Takuya had a great knowledge of music, and the discussion with him ended with us deciding to incorporate electro, big beat, break beats, and a whole bunch of other genres. Hideki Naganuma, who was the composer, was able to apply these ideas well. You'll notice that even early on in development, keeping the presence of Japanese street culture was important to the development team. I don't think the music of JSRPG changes very much from the original Jet Set Radio. The development team would still be striving to avoid tropes of other Sega titles, and I think this would extend to the music. It's not going to sound like some epic fantasy adventure. I do think if you kind of go for that more industrial look of the original concept sketches, you're probably going to have more of a new metal, punk, underground house influence. But one thing I do think JSRPG could actually improve over the original is characterization. Now, the character designs of Jet Set Radio are unique and iconic. There's no denying that. But honestly, I think the games could have given these characters a little more room to grow and interact with each other. The little dialogue trees in the garage during Jet Set Radio Future and the Chapter 2 cutscenes between Combo Cube and the GGs are great. I just want more of it, and an RPG-based Jet Set Radio game could have given us more characterization. We could have also seen more direct conversation with DJ Professor K, perhaps as a mentor and guide to the Rudies. It would have him more involved directly with the game's story. There's just more opportunity with an RPG to allow the characters to be fleshed out. Because you're literally playing a role in this game, you want to be attached to these characters. These are just a few changes I think would deviate JSRPG from its original design for the better. But what sort of new things could it add to the Jet Set Radio formula? Well, I'm glad you asked. With more characterization in JSRPG, I think you would see some more distinction not only between the GGs, but the members of other Rudy gangs too. Like maybe slightly different headgear for Poison Jam members, or different tattoos and hairstyles for the Love Shockers, as an example. I think you would also have the capability to customize skaters to your liking too. It was an idea I had many years ago when I made a Jet Set Radio 3 video trying to conceptualize a third game in the series. While it might not work for an action-based game, I think having stat customization in an RPG-based Jet Set Radio would be great, and it would encourage players to try other skaters throughout the playthrough. I'm thinking it would be less like adding stat points in games like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, since you can basically max everyone's stats and they all feel pretty similar. In this case, it would be more something like the Sphere Grid in Final Fantasy X. Different growth paths for each character, but there might be some crossover in abilities. As you progress through the game, getting big combos with tricks or combat moves would build up experience to grow your character. Depending on the game structure, if it retains that stage-based progression of Jet Set Radio, you could also use the in-game timer and the level rankings to add experience multipliers too. Much like the original Jet Set Radio, you'd probably face some challenges in JSRPG as well. They just might be a little different than what you're used to. 
One piece of concept art I liked a lot was this drawing of a skater who looked similar to Pete facing off against some other skaters. It got the gears turning and really had me thinking about how rival battles are structured in Jet Set Radio. I think JSRPG would do things a bit differently with direct conflict. You'd still be able to recruit characters as you could in the original, but there might be some more options for diverse gameplay. Something akin to say, the parts war concept from the manga Air Gear. It would work great in this sort of new world. Your first few conflicts are solo based, and as the game progresses, the scale of difficulty will grow as you add more teammates, obstacles, hazards, etc. Rudy gangs could also compete in roller derby style endurance matches to determine the strongest skater. There could also be a sporting aspect to it as well, kind of like what's accomplished in other games like Roller Champions or Roller Drone. This would help to establish a hierarchy between the different gangs of Tokyo Tokyo whether it's competing for resources, bragging rights, physical territory, or whoever's going to be leading the charge of resistance against Rokaku. I think having a definitive type of conflict could be good to cap off different parts of the story. One concept I liked thinking of was something called a mural battle. It combines the artistic expression of graffiti in the original game, but keeps the action combat of JSRPG. Essentially, two teams of skaters would paint the town, kind of like the graffiti mode in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. The more elaborate the mural design, the more points scored via judging. Teams could also paint over each other's designs, making every fight in a playthrough unique to that playthrough. I think mural battle could be good to determine the best of the best, literally marking a gang's territory, keeping self-expression alive in the youth culture. So while originally it might have seemed very out of left field, I think a Jet Set Radio action-based RPG would work pretty well. Also, it's not as though other games haven't borrowed elements from Sega's skating adventure to bring their own action or role-playing games to life. Sunset Overdrive has all the free roam inline skating as Jet Set Radio, but with a little more gun combat against energy-fueled mutants. The World Ends With You series may not hold onto the skating aspect of Jet Set Radio, but really brings attention to Japanese street culture and striking visual design while also having fun action RPG combat. Hi-Fi Rush is focused on music-based combat while also resisting corporate interests and finding one's place in the world. And with its combination of influence from Jet Set Radio and Lethal League, Team Reptile's Bomb Rush Cyberfunk could have more of what I'm looking for, but maybe not as much as this other title called Jamphibian, which is basically like Jet Set Radio meets the Ninja Turtles. I think this might be the closest thing to what I've been talking about, and I really want to play this. With how flexible game design has become since the release of Jet Set Radio, the crossover of genres adds a new layer to game design, and concepts imagined here aren't outside the realm of possibility. Perhaps a new Jet Set Radio game could use some of these ideas, but we'll have to tune into the airwaves another time time for that. All right, thanks again for tuning in. As a quick little question, if you were asked to make a Jet Set Radio style RPG, what would you do? Let me know. Just wanted to thank Bao again for the concept drawings of Jet Set Radio RPG. I also wanted to thank Dead Toot for compiling, editing, and uploading a lot of these concept images. And finally, Nate B64 and Rising Sonic 17 for all the extra footage. Shout out to those of you who support me directly and shout out to everybody who's watching. Go check out my video on Jet Set Radio's development and cut content if you want more of this kind of video. But that's going to do it for this time. I'm False Proof, and I'll see you next time. Bye.